the Urban Dictionary and stuff. Right. It's amazing how every day, if you read the Urban Dictionary every day, every day there's like 20 new words. Yeah. And so it is evolving, which makes yeah. a language alive. Mm -hmm. right. And I think the more abund languages, yeah. they don't keep evolving. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, what I was really surprised about it, learning for this play is how fast and how many languages are dying there are thousands. off. There's so thousands. like something like 7,000 languages are yeah. disappearing. But the right. fact that more and more are dying out every day, that's an actual and, true fact. And globalization and yeah. the internet and expanding territories yeah. and all that kind of stuff make these little languages keep But it all has to do with, with shame. Exactly. I was just going to say that. There's an embarrassment to be able to speak that language yeah, that right. no one is supposed to use. Right. And I remember watching a documentary with my mother because she comes, she was born in 1935, she comes from a generation of the, the immigrants that came knew they needed to speak English. They knew they had to. And so parents. they actually let their languages die. Mm -hmm. So this whole idea of a salad bowl didn't really exist. It was a melting pot that we would all start to become one perfect little thing that all spoke the same language. Whereas now I feel like, well, no, honestly, that's what the, that's what this country wants. But there are a lot of people in this country that are open to saying like, no, why can't this, why can't the stop sign also be in Spanish and Arabic and French and right, whatever? Yeah. Yeah. Well, but why can't the ballots a, be in this? You know? But there's also the middle ground. They won't allow children to fail in early education. And if the, or or to, to be a little bit slower, which would be a great thing because you could do immersion language. They could still hold on to their old language, mm -hmm. but really learn English. But when did that start? When did what? When did this whole idea of? Because I remember, I remember so vividly in my. Because I only went to public school until second grade, and then we ended up going to Catholic school. But I remember so vividly being in first grade, and the first day of second grade, you went back to your old first grade classroom, and Mrs. Keeley told us all which second grade class we got to go to. And clearly, the we those of us that were the advanced class got right. to go to Mrs. Barron's class, and the people yes. that were sort of at the regular level went to Miss Parker's class. And then she was like, and David and Aaron are staying with me for one more year. When did yeah. that happen? Like, I don't understand when that I mean, happened, the other thing like, that I that think, didn't... like, when did it happen? Yeah. I, mean, I remember being really little, and there was a television commercial that said um, there was a grandpa and his grandson in a rowboat, and the, the grandson was talking about what he did yesterday, and he said, and I went out with Robbie, and he said, oh, who's, grandpa said, who's Robbie? And, and he said, Robbie's my Jewish friend. And the grandpa <laughs> said, Robbie's not your Jewish friend, he's just your friend. <laughs> and like, our, our childhood, my childhood, was all about melting pot. Yeah, like we're all yeah, the yeah. same. We lose our identities yeah, yeah, yeah. and we become American. Right. And now the world is we keep our identities and we celebrate Christmas and Hanukkah and, and Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa and whatever. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. And so we are now so mosaic and not melting pot. <laughs> you know, and that's different than when I yeah. was twelve. Yeah. yeah.